Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Welcome everybody back here at Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. I have a very special guest today. I have uh, one of the second generation Bairds, Mr. Matt Baird. How you doing this morning, Matt? Okay, Steve, how you doing, buddy? Hey, we're hanging in there, we're hanging in here. Thanks for doing? stopping by, affording us some time. Thank you. I uh, know you've got <clears throat> a lot of stuff going on this time of year, but uh, just so that people know, and like a lot of us over here at the mill, we uh, we wear different hats. You got a different hat on today. What's 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 your responsibilities today? Well, uh, this is this is my wintertime look here. I always wear a dress hat in the wintertime. Uh, my responsibilities here, uh, I call myself general manager, plant manager. Although there's a lot of beards that work here, uh, I handle a lot of the day-to-day -day things. Uh, always, always my favorite spot to be is selling lumber or being in the lumber mill. Don't always get there every day. You know, as far as a lot of folks know, when you own a business, you wear a lot of different hats. It's always been that way around here. Absolutely. It's always every, been that way around everybody here. Everybody covers everybody, and that's <clears throat> why we've been such a success. Steve and I have been together since we were kids. We won't tell you how old we are now, but we're not 22 anymore. Uh, we've had some fantastic times here. We've had highs. We've had lows. Uh, you know, Steve's done an excellent job here. Uh, you, you know, we've all come up through the ranks from working in the old sawmill uh, to working in the finished mill, to working in sales, to our managerial positions that we have now within the company. You know, my, my mind is like in overload right now, just, just listening to you, you speak. <clears throat> and we had uh, the fortune, the privilege of, of serving a tutelage underneath four very important people. Yes. Uh, and you know exactly who, well, I'm, uh, who I'm referencing. Well, I'm gonna say five <laughs> very important people because Steve's dad was our uh, sawmill superintendent here. And Charlie come, well, that's... Yeah, Charlie <clears throat> come to work with us in 1971 or two. Yeah, yeah. And was here a lifetime and you know, he was, he was as close to my dad, he was like a brother to my dad. You know, if we were working, if we were working on Sunday, Charlie was working here on Sunday. So, so yeah, and, and, and thanks for that mention. Uh, you know, Felix would appreciate it. Yeah, that was his nickname, Felix. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so. But, <clears throat> you know, you had, uh, uh, we still have Hatch. Yep. Hello, Hatch. Yep. Uh, we we served underneath Howard. Yep. And Sister Helen and your father, yep. Richard. Yes. Uh, wow, what we were taught. We were taught a lot. We were. Taught, I think the most important thing we were taught responsibility and how to work, and <clears throat> that we were even even we as kids, you know, how old were you when you started here? Sixteen. Sixteen. You know, uh, I've been pounding this concrete since I was five. Uh, and I'm 56 now. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was hard work, but, you know, and, and like I said about his dad, Charlie, I learned more off of Charlie Stack as a kid growing up than I could have possibly learned at any trade school anywhere in the country. Just a quiet, patient, fantastic craftsman. And uh, I, I learned a lot off of him, as I learned off <clears throat> of my uncles and my aunt. You know, and they, they weren't they weren't afraid to share their knowledge. No, 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 yeah. And and you 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 know you you you've known guys over the years. I've known guys over the year. They knew how to do something specific, and they wouldn't share it. Yeah, not everybody's a teacher. <clears throat> no. And, yeah. and uh, we had that fortune. Yes, we did. And uh, I'm I'm thinking. Uh, they set a direction. For, for this company. Yes. And one of those things, we're having a second generation in place that 
understood the business, uh, understood the hardwood lumber industry. And one of the first things that they did for you as, as a younger man was they sent you down to Memphis. Why'd you go to Memphis? Well, uh, you know, as, as far as kids that are in the lumber business coming in, I went to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I went to National Lumber Inspection School down there. Uh, you're down there, when I went, you were down there about six, seven months. And when you were done, uh, you come home with a license. And it's just, the, it's just, it, it's, it's not a basic knowledge. I mean, we learned a rule book down there. The guy that taught me, it was word for word. And the lumber inspection rules were word for word. Uh, I was in there with, with kids my age, I was 18. I was in there with kids that were just got out of college or were gonna go into sales. I was in there with guys that were 60 that were pursuing a second career. Yeah, and that's, and that's you know it, I know it, we both appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's just not lumber. It's, no. you know, whether it be the walnut, the cherry, the maple, the hickory. I mean, we receive it back in the day it came off of a stump yep. to our to the mill that we used to have here, yes. and and then we took it through the manufacturing process. Today, we buy the sawn lumber in and yep. take it through manufacturing. Uh, but our product, your father said it, Hatch still says it. Our product goes in to our customers' homes. Absolutely, and we have a certain criteria that we work hard at maintaining yes we do you know uh, you know I tell you know I tell people and you know maybe this is boasting this is bragging but it's not I tell people and I tell our folks that work here whether you're the last guy I hired catch your moldings on the back of a molder you're a setup technician you're an engineer we have got to be the best in the world at what we do and I honestly think that we are, you know, I always say when you come here and you buy a product, I want you to be satisfied and come back the third and fourth time. I don't want you to come here for one project and be done with us. And you know, Steve can tell you through the years, our clients continually, people come back to me or I'll see people in town when I meet in my lunch or, or whatever or out and they'll say, you know, I did my house with you and back in 1976, you know, but they're back in here they put an addition on that house and they're back in here buying our products for the third and fourth time. You know, that, that, that's a great representation of our product. Uh, I've heard, I've heard you say it. Uh, we strive to get everything right the first time. Yes, we do. Sometimes something will slip through the crack. Absolutely. And that's life. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. We. The, th the thing is, with those mistakes we make, we're here. You can talk to me, you can talk to him, but we'll fix it, we'll make it right. You know, and I, uh, in, in what seems to be a previous life uh, here at the mill, uh, being an outside salesperson, that was, that was like the best trump card. Uh, it was like diffusing a bomb. If you had a situation, you could, you could look at our customer yeah. in the face and say, guess what? Yeah. We've been at 7060 Quarry Road since 1960. Yes. We're not picking up and moving. No. We're going to be here until we get you fixed up. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we live by that. Yeah. You know, and another thing with our, with our quality of our product, we, uh, you know, uh, this, is, this is my take and my life and what I do. We maintain custody of that product from the, from the green lumber to the dry kills to the rip, rip saw building, in through our molding plant. Uh, our moldings are all finished. We try to finish them at 25 knife marks to the inch, you know, so they don't look like a corn cob when you stain them. And everything's heated. Everything's climate controlled, uh, humidity controlled. We maintain custody of that product until it goes to your project. So you talk about climate control, and I'm, I'm thinking back two stories pop out in my head. Number one, uh, January in Northeast Ohio, and back when we had the sawmill, guys would come in to our little retail makeshift yes. area that we had, yes. and they'd want to load up 
four dozen one by six, 16 foot rough cut oak fence boards. Absolutely. And we'd go out there with we a- We handled a lot <laughs> of that stuff, didn't we? With a, with a sledgehammer yeah. because the lumber was green. It was froze in a dead stack bunk yep. and you'd tap them loose and you'd load the guy. Why anybody would want to put fence up in January, I, I, I don't, don't know. know. But, boy, but they always did. That. Yes, they always did. did. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that number one. Number two, uh, prior to you going to Memphis and on your return back from Memphis, and correct me if I'm wrong on the timetables, but uh, there's, there's a gentleman uh, we used to call Baron. Yep. And <clears throat> that's when we used to stick lumber outside. Yes. There was a 55 gallon fire pit drum. <laughs> yeah, I sucked a lot of heat out of that baby. <laughs> yeah, the story was with Baron, uh, his name was Richard Sisney. What National Lumber Inspection, he went down there. That guy knew that rule book, like telling a story. And took great pride in what he did. And you know, back, th back in the sawmill days, we stuck all that lumber. That stick yard was either 10 below or 110. And we would, and I did the same thing when I come home because Richard uh, unfortunately passed away. I was supposed to go to two more schools and I ended up, I didn't go to those schools and I stayed here. And, uh, but yeah, we, it, it, like Steve's saying with the sledgehammer, beat the boards apart, flip them, measure them, grade them, and stick them. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. It was all work, 100% work. It, yeah. it was it was a different it was a different time but yeah but that's what that's what the three boys did breaking in starting a new business back in the late 50s 1960 incorporation et cetera, and so forth and and it it gave you an appreciation absolutely you know at the end of the ball at the end <clears throat> of the ball game i know from the time i was five years old this was all i ever wanted to do I wanted to be a better tree cutter, a better woodworker, a better businessman, not to be a big shot, to make my people proud. I always, and I did, you know, I thought, I thought when, uh, when I'd go to school, I'd say, hey, what'd you do this work at weekend? I thought everybody went to work with their dad. Well, I watched cartoons. <laughs> I was up here, we were building pallets from the time I could pick a one by four up and throw it up on the jig. So, yeah, I, I've always loved this industry always loved it you know we've seen we at this facility in Canfield Ohio uh, <clears throat> yearly from from the time we were in you know our, our late teens and in coming on board and working here every day and we've seen significant growth yes but that growth was doable because of something that we still, as a company, focus on today. Reinvestment into our capital assets. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, myself, my cousins, my, my parents, my uncles, my aunt, we don't have boats down in Florida. We don't have a uh, big house up on Erie. We have always taken our earnings and reinvested them back into our company and our community. And that's very important to us. <clears throat> so that allows that allows us uh, back in the day I can remember we were 25 employees 30 yes. employees and now yeah. we're in excess of a hundred employees and and uh, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of good that spins out of this nucleus that we call home yes uh, and you know touch on touch on and, and, and I know you've got you've, you've got stories we had we had your father uh, had a big heart. Uh, there was another guy who used to float around here. His name was Whitey Cleo. Yep. And and if it was on his back, you were welcome to it. Yeah. Soul, That's, soul of the earth. Yeah. One right. Of, one of that was my uncle Whitey. He was married to my aunt Helen, and aunt Helen worked here. He was a steel truck driver, and then he <laughs> retired, and then he come to work with us and. He would run, he'd go to town and get parts, and you know, that was his deal, and he's station wagon, and uh, yeah, salt of the earth guy, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know how many times I heard, well, on Friday, guys get their paychecks, they open their paycheck, and they say, well, I gotta go square up with Cleo, he lent, he lent me $20 <laughs> on Tuesday. That's the way he was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah. But 
what I, th those are life's lessons. They are. <laughs> and I learned a lot from him. I, yeah. I really did. Yeah. yeah. I really did. Just not about trucks. I learned, I learned a lot of lessons in life from him. You know, we'd be down at the farm down here eating lunch, and I'd tell him, hey, you know what? He'd say, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to do it. And he was right. You know, I, <clears throat> I, I didn't need to do what I was going to do. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, he was a fantastic guy. So, so we fast forward a little bit. And, and we talk about uh, when we put what I'll call the actual first retail showroom in. It was all of about 200 square feet. Yeah, that was uh, a big deal back then, yeah. It was a big deal. We went yeah. from a, a single walk-in door as a main entrance to a six-foot double, double door as door. a main entrance. Yeah. And uh, we actually had two little counters. Uh, Yourself, myself, Scotty, uh, Howard, uh, your dad on Saturdays, we'd, we'd jump in and we'd work that little retail show, showroom. And, and, uh, and boy, weren't our clients great. I mean, our clients are fantastic today, and thank you. But back then, you'd be out here. You know, the only way you could buy lumber was through Steve on the road, or you come to this re new retail location. Uh, we, you know, we didn't have online sales, and that was on. Th but we would have cars from Pittsburgh and Cuyahoga Falls and Akron and Cleveland, and yeah, it was just a fantastic time. Yeah, that was that was yeah. in. Uh, I think that's when it clicked for me that hey, you know what? It always clicked for me, but you know what? We got something here. That was that was in the the late '70s, early '80s, and uh, we you know we saw growth and expansion and and. Uh, then back in 1988, uh, we experienced a, a devastating fire. Oh my goodness! And and uh, sure was. Yeah. I I recall I recall your dad uh, saying, uh, "Well, the the night of the fire, the night of the fire." And and I've I've I, I've gone through some newspaper articles lately that we're gonna we're gonna be sharing with the folks uh, on our social and so forth. But I remember the night of the fire. It was it was a, a unified group of of guys, uh, ownership, employees. There was never a question. It was going to be rebuilt. Yes. And that's when we put the addition on the front of the molding facility. Yes. The molding plant, and we went a little bit bigger again. Absolutely. And and. Uh, what a great time that was because in 1989, we had our grand reopening. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked out of a, a mobile trailer office and, and, and out in the front of the parking lot. I remember Jerry Ricciuti was here. I was, a, I was a fireman on two fire departments for 25 years. And I remember that night of the fire when my radio went off and I thought, eh, it must just be a hot fan or something. So I'd pile on my truck. I come over the hill down here at Leffingwell Road at Redgate Farm, and you could look down here, it was like daylight. That's how involved it was. And yeah. uh, Jerry Ricciuti from Channel 27 come out the next morning, and I interviewed with him, and he says, well, you know, how long are you guys gonna be shut down to rebuild? I said, we'll be in business tomorrow morning. And we were. We operated out of an old house trailer. In our showroom, we took an old loading dock in the front of this building over here, and we make shift at, and we run out of there. We we never missed a step. No, no. That next morning, uh, I think at that time it was still going by Ohio Bell. Yeah. They came out, ran some new lines. We dropped the phone on a post. Yep. yep. And and yep. we had we had phone. I mean, yep. so so we're talking 1989. I'm. Uh, the phone was our livelihood. It was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the it was phone in our, in our walk-in. And, yeah. and I remember the day after the fire, uh, <clears throat> we had folks coming in to pick up lumber. Yeah, we did. We started, yeah, guys were coming in, folks were coming in, and we were selling lumber. Yeah. Thank goodness that our main warehouse, Right. yeah, if that wind would have been coming out of the south that night, we'd have lost everything. Yeah, and yeah. this building over here, the main warehouse, is like a box <clears throat> of matches. So, so you know, at, at that point, that was that was a time in the company's history that <clears throat> you and your cousins were coming of age, uh, starting to fill positions, take on more responsibilities, and and uh, 
it wasn't always the easiest ride. No. But no. We went from three principles, and now we have uh, what do you have? Six in second, your generation. Our second, yeah. Right. Yeah, six. S six in your generation. Yourself, your sister, uh, Hatches, Tim, and Terry, and yep. and uh, Howard, Scott, and uh, and Mark, and. Dang, if we don't see history repeating itself again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How many of your children do you have at the facility now? Three. I have five children, and I have three of them that work here. I have uh, Zachary. He's a mechanical engineer. He come home from Goodyear. He's my, he's my plant engineer now. Uh, Benny is my plant manager in the molding plant. And then I have a daughter, uh, Sarah, who was a state meat inspector. Her and her husband farmed 1,200 <clears throat> acres. They wanted to have a baby. We well, can't be a state meat inspector and call a kid out of bed at 3.30 in the morning. So now I'm lucky. She's in my office and she's my head accountant here. And all along the way, uh, I've, had, I've had the privilege of witnessing it. Responsibilities are being passed on, uh, number one. Number two, more importantly, values are being passed on. Absolutely. Uh, as with all the third generation, pretty solid group of kids. Yes, they are. And I'll call them kids out of no disrespect, no. but they're still oh. kids. And well, people uh, still call you and I kids. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, those days are gone. Yeah. But, but you know, it, it's it's good to see, and and you and I, from a similar generation. Uh, would you have ever thought you would you would carry a, an iPhone around in your pocket and be able to do the business that we've done? We came uh, from we came absolutely. from a time where we wrote orders all, all out hand orders. Yeah. We we did that other thing called what math. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had to do With math. That machine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and would you have ever thought? No. No, you know, I'd have never thought when we were kids, uh, you know, I always knew as long as we worked hard and we tried to be as good a business people as we were and leaders and, and you know, and, and, and I always say in the other half of that equation, okay, you know, I laid down in bed one night and told my wife, I said, man, I've been in the lumber business for over 40 years legally and, uh, is the people that along the way, I could sit here and, and we could do a whole segment on people that when we started to, to, to present day, we're only as good as our people and we have a fantastic staff. We really, we, we really always do. have had a, yes, we've always had a fantastic staff. <clears throat> you know, you talk, you talk about our, our staff, our workforce. Uh, we, we've, as, as a country, we're still trying to come through this pandemic scenario you know we had a we had a two-week shutdown uh, back in late March uh, a year ago a uh, year and a half over a year and a half ago now and and uh, last week of March first week of April out of concern for everybody's safety it was decided the family decided we're gonna shut it down and through that first week uh, we would be getting some phone calls and, and uh, we'd sneak in and we'd get a contractor this or that or you know we had customers driving down from Cleveland hey I need this stuff you know and and when we re partially reopened the showroom didn't open but the manufacturing did we figure we had about 85 percent of our workforce yeah. come back voluntarily absolutely yeah and, and it wasn't too long after that that everybody started to trickle back in. Um, so that, that speaks volumes. Oh, about, it does. It does. <clears throat> yeah, know. I never had one person tell me I'm not coming back to work yet. Yeah. They were like, hey, what do you want me to do? I'm like, hey, I want you to come in. And they were here, you know. And that's the way it's always been with our people. Well, there's, there's uh, five offices upstairs on that balcony. <clears throat> and... and uh, those doors are always open. Absolutely. And and I think that is a reflection of the response we saw from yes. my coworkers, your employees, 
uh, on the return from from uh, being shut down for a couple of weeks, and and I, I can't go any further without you know saying to to our to our customers in the Mahoning Valley, to our customers uh, regionally in Cleveland and in Pittsburgh, <clears throat> and across the United States for that matter. What a response they had during the, oh. this whole episode. Yeah, they're rock stars. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was phenomenal that we were going through all that uh, and that those folks come in here because we shut. I actually myself went to the front gate for how long? Oh, yeah. Where are you going? What do you need? Yes, sir. No, ma'am. And it worked. When we started that, I thought, this is, uh, is going to be a nightmare. It worked. And, you know, I, and I just got to tell our clients, thank you. You know, we did business, and it worked because of our customers. There Absolutely. was there oh. was, there was a need, and and yeah. we we were able to. Uh, that's when we instituted pretty much a no contact. Yes. Call your order in. Pull place your, your order online. Pull your truck in. Back in. <clears throat> you're loaded. You're gone. You know, yeah. we had that tent set up down at the gate. And you would receive them, or I would receive yes. them, or yeah. okay, yeah, I'm here to pick up order so and so. Direct them to a building. They pulled up. They got loaded. They got down yeah. the road. Yeah. And and then we uh, a month or so into that, then we uh, we were able to open the showroom by appointment only. Yes. And but it did. It it changed uh, the buying profile. Yes. And and you know it's it's important for folks to know that. We have the retail facility, the retail showroom. Uh, we have a great staff of, of uh, phone salesmen. You know, our, our counter sales guys are there, the phone sales guys are there, we have our outside sales staff. And we leapfrogged to a new era yes, of, we did. of uh, wow, this wool call is pretty nice. If I'm a contractor, yeah. If I'm a contractor, I can I can place my order at six o'clock in the evening before I have dinner at home, and I can have one of my guys come in at eight thirty the next morning, pick it up, be in and out of here, be at the job that site by nine, yeah. Yeah. and and working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's important for them to take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, but that that uh, the old three three zero five three 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 one two two phone number. That's still a lifeline to us. It is. It uh, is. You know, we we have always been that hands-on. We want to talk to you. Yeah. We when want you to call talk in to here. You. You're going to talk to somebody. Yeah. It's knowledgeable about what they're talking about. And, and and along the way, we've we've experienced uh, we've experienced a ton of great things. Yes, we have. Uh, we've we've had some hard times. We. Uh, uh, your father, Richard, he was a, a one of many quotes that that I can recite from him. He'd, he'd say, "You know what? We'd we'd be going through a hard time." And he'd say, "You know what? The only thing we can do, Hood, get up in the morning, put our work boots on, and try and make something good." Yep, yep. And we did. It was that philosophy. And we did. And that uh, that has allowed us as a company us as individuals grow uh, three years ago, three years, yeah, three and a half years ago, we hosted a group, a national television uh, show here on the property, and that was in the form of this old house. And I, I remember, we had, we had quite a crowd that day. It was it was a fun day, but I remember Scotty, your cousin, saying, "Dad would never believe this." No, they would have never believed that. No, you no. know, and and that was a milestone. Yes. You know, prior to that, yeah, uh, I look back as a milestone when when we decided we weren't going to be able to survive off of a fantastic market, but a smaller market, the Mahoning Valley. And we started into Cleveland and Pittsburgh with regional home shows. That was another first for us. Absolutely, yeah. You know, yeah. And <clears throat> you you really 
recognize an appreciation for our customer and vice versa, our customer appreciating us. When you go, and I know you go and you wander around and you talk to people, and as do I, and, and we have relationships in excess of 35 years. Absolutely, yes, With we customers. Do. Yes, we do. And, and you know, that's, that's another appreciation. It's not, it's not the fact that I want to sell you lumber. No, no, <laughs> no, it's about, re you know, business, at the end of the day, business is about relationships. I can sell you lumber or, or whatever business transaction we're doing. You need to trust me and I need to be able to trust in you. And I think we've done it. We've always tried to do a good job at that. <clears throat> yeah, we, our, our feet were held to the fire to do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's been an amazing uh, in excess of 40 years yes. for me. And, and uh, you know, I, I wonder, uh, our, little, our little Studio 3B here, you know. Yeah, who ever thought we'd have our own TV studio? Thank you to you. You've driven this project. You know, it's, it's been fun. And, and, and uh, we're, we're attempting to go to another level. Yes. Uh, we're going to use this studio just like for today, having discussion with, with ownership co-workers, uh, customer contractors. Uh, we're going to have everybody, you know, in, in here and out of here. But it's another avenue, another venue for people to go to our content studio that houses all of our, all of our profiles, our uh, Build It With Baird, our American Hardwood Advisor, and, and uh, our plan room. and and uh, there's a couple others, but if you want to learn about Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods yes. and the Baird Brothers family, the Baird Brothers employees, that's where you want to land, contentstudio.bairdbrothers.com. Oh, what a fantastic, and, what a fantastic thing. You yes. know, and- It tells and, a story. Exactly, and it goes back to what you were alluding to earlier, that trust. Yes. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the middle of Texas and I want to place a nice hardwood lumber order and I have it on my screen ready to push that button and put my credit card in. I'm ordering lumber from a guy in a cornfield in Canfield, Ohio. Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, you have to get over that, yes. you know, that reservation of, well, do I want to, don't I want to? And <clears throat> so now, you want to know something about us? Visit the website, Absolutely. visit the content studio, and listen to some of the podcasts. Uh, you know, sitting around the house at night, go see some of the projects that we're doing with folks and some of the interviews we're doing with folks and, and get a little better understanding. And, and hopefully it's going to be enough to, to, to push them to, uh, hey, these guys are okay. At the, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think something that we offer that a lot, maybe a lot of our competitors don't, with all the electronic and, and, and social media and everything, hey, if you got to pick the phone up, pick the phone up. We'll talk to you. I'm in the office every day. You, you can pick that phone up and call me. If I'm not here, I'll call you back. So, yeah, yeah, you know. Same with Steve. So, yeah, yeah. If you. you if you just want to talk about, hey, I got a kitchen floor, I need crown molding, I, yeah. Or our sales representatives. Every one of those guys are very, very well versed in what we do. So the, the big question, uh, where do we go from here? You know, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm of a mindset. Uh, I never thought I would be learning some of this stuff today that it takes to do business. And, and I'm referring to our third generation fill-in slots. Yes. On, on the, the, uh, uh, the electronic side, the device side, uh, the digital era, the streaming era, uh, we still want to be in front of our customer. We still want to offer that high quality product 
at somewhat of a value. And, and so here we go again. You know, we're doing as much business in the clouds as we are out of Absolutely. our out of our storefront. And you know, for me, for me, I for me myself, I think it's a real privilege for me to be part of that. I mean, Steve's talking about the high tech, the streaming, the internet, social media. You know, on the other side of the coin is we get right down and we are old fashioned quality and we're gonna be here to make the best products that we can make, and we're always available. So we have the best of two worlds. We have the high, uh, the high tech, but yet we have the one-on-one. -on -one. You know, and, and, and I'll, I'll throw it out there. You and I were just discussing this a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, big isn't always better. Absolutely not, that's correct. And, uh, We've we've got we've we've got an attitude that was that was passed down to us. Uh, that that guy that that you called your father, he told me one time we're driving home from Cleveland. He'd, he'd always go out for me on a ride and and see what was going on and and uh, uh, always kept his hand on the pulse of what was going on and his customers and and. We're coming home from Cleveland one day, and he says, Hood, he says, there's a lot of opportunity out here. He said, however big of a piece of that pie we can get, he says, we never want to lose sight yes. that that is going to be the best piece of pie that person has ever ate. Yes. And they'll come back for that piece of pie again. Yes. And, and uh, like you say, we, we work hard at getting things right. When we don't get things right, uh, we want to minimize the inconvenience and we're going to be here to get it hashed out. Absolutely. Yeah, when you, buy, when you buy products from us, when you buy our product and it's in your home, I will give you a personal guarantee that it will be right. And if it isn't, when it ships out of here or you get it installed in your home, it's coming back out and you're getting a new shipment. <clears throat> You'll never be disgusted with our company, I promise. That sums it up, Matthew. Uh, hey, appreciate reflecting. Absolutely. Uh, Man, we could sit here and talk all day, Steve. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and, and thanks for, for uh, uh, allotting some time for us uh, well, this morning. For, thank you for having me. And uh, hey, folks, stay tuned. More to come from Studio 3B in Canfield, Ohio, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time, 